This show is clean, pretty much. Hey, hey, hey. Mike's Daily Podcast. Episode 792. We're just eight away from 800. Hello, it's Mike Matthews, broadcasting from the last place on Earth, located somewhere in Podcaster Valley, California. Today, I have the finale of my intimate interview with the very talented Dustin Brown of the Portland, Oregon band NTNT. Plus, we hear from Benita, the disgruntled fiddle player, the brewmaster, and Mars Had Lakes. You mean that... Mike's Daily Podcast. There once was a Red Planet Fishing Club. Cool. I'm just uh, assuming that... Mike's Daily Podcast. On the last show, Shelly Shuhart told me I should never wear yoga tights. That was a bit of good advice for me, despite the fact that I look great in tights. I know that the mirror never lies. Okay, maybe it kind of does. If you, if I see it through your own eyes, you can sometimes, you know, pepper the results. Likes. Daily Podcast. And I recently was at a party where I was trying to explain what this podcast as it Mike's is about. Daily. And the people podcast looked at me yeah. all confused. And that was fun. But it was a fun party that I went to over the weekend that was thrown by Joe of the band Cure for Gravity. Look, who just walked in. Hi, Mike. It's Benita the Rodeo Queen. Hi, I'm doing. And it's a disgruntled fiddle player. Tell you what. What? How come we weren't invited to this party as well? Uh, well, I. You were. Uh, I just uh, couldn't fit you guys in my car. Joe and Jesma put this party on. They are two of the nicest people I have ever met in the Bay Area. They are so cool. And they had great food there, and they Cure for Gravity played music. It was wonderful. And there was another band called, oh, I've got their CD right here, Mollerette. I'm going to try and have them on the show at some point, too. Look who else just walked in. Hello there, Mike. I make the root beer. I'm the brewmaster. Oh, boy. Brewmaster, how's the root beer going in your root beer vat right now? Mike, I've tried to start making root beer again, but I just can't get into the groove. Boy, you've got to prove your love to me. That's a Madonna song. It is. It's kind of strange. I was watching the latest Simpsons. I think it's the latest one. It's called Covercraft, where Homer is doing a cover band with uh, Apu. Apu's the lead singer, and Apu like has this amazing like Bon Jovi esque voice. Not that Bon Jovi's voice is amazing, but you know, some people prefer it. <laughs> on a prayer that kind of voice and then they're singing and it's a funny story all kinds of inside jokes about the music industry to the point where it made me kind of depressed because I'm like yeah the state of the music industry is kind of ridiculous and why would anyone want to throw themselves into it or be a part of it as I have decided to be in interviewing bands or the bands that I've interviewed have decided to throw themselves into it and I decided you know what f*** them it's art Right? You have got to march to your own drum. The beat of your own drum. You've got to. Life is short. No rehearsal. We only get through this thing once. So you've got to do it your way. And forget what people are saying when they say to you, Oh, are you, is your band like this? Is your band like that? No, my band's like nothing you've ever heard before. But that's human nature as we want to compare things. So is your podcast like Mark Marin's podcast? Mark Marin! I am a total indie do-it-yourself guy that has never had any bit of popularity in my life. Mark Marin's been in a bunch of movies. He was in Almost Famous, for gosh sakes. He used to be on TV all the time. He's had his run, his exposure to the masses. Starting a podcast was just sort of a cherry on top of the whipped cream thing. Sunday, thank you. I've had nothing, so this is just me doing this, because I, I like doing this, and I think some people do as well. I may be completely self-deluded about that, similar to when I look in the mirror and see myself in yoga tights and think that I look good. Mark, I don't know how to describe this show to people. I mean, I'm a rodeo queen. What the hell is that? Well, there are lots of rodeo queens in the United States. Yeah, but I've never even been on a horse. You, well, who's Nilly then? A figment of my imagination. 
Oh, this is all too earth shaking for me. Mark, it's true. We're not even redneck hicks or anything. We're just normal people. Normal, boring people that wish we were on Mark Marin's podcast. Oh, his show on IFC is so funny. Mark, we're going to go home and watch it right now. Bye, bye. IFC is the best. All my preconceived notions have been shaken to the core. And when I heard this news as well, this was very fascinating to hear, that NASA says its Curiosity rover started picking up distinct patterns in the rocks as it approached Mount Sharp on Mars. You know Mount Sharp on Mars. They make a good cheese there. At the time, researchers believed the tilted forms were remnants of streams emptying into a larger bed of water. And then NASA announced today that it now has additional evidence to indicate that Mars was once home to many long-lasting lakes. Researchers have long puzzled over why Mount Sharp, which is about three miles tall, sits in a crater and has hundreds of rock layers... Curiosity Project scientist John Grotzinger said, We are making headway in solving the mystery of Mount Sharp. Where there's now a mountain, there may have once been a series of lakes. The rover is currently examining the Murray Formation, which comprises the lowest sedimentary layers of Mount Sharp and is where rivers repeatedly deposited various sands and silt. Grotzinger went on to say that the great thing about a lake that occurs repeatedly over and over is that each time it comes back, it is another experiment to tell you how the environment works. As Curiosity climbs higher on Mount Sharp, we will have a series of experiments to show patterns in how the atmosphere and the water and the sediments interact. We may see how the chemistry changed in the lakes over time. This is a hypothesis supported by what we have observed so far, providing a framework for testing in the coming years. Scientists talk so funny. Research from Curiosity is being used to plan a human mission to Mars in the 2030s. Wow. So do your best to stay alive till 2030, because we're going to go to Mars by then. Awesome. What do you think about all this, going to Mars, or people that want to put you in a pigeonhole and say, you're this type of pigeon, and you're like, no, I'm not a pigeon. I'm a peacock. Ah! And, you know, life. What do you think about life? Oh, and I will say that Jesma, Joe's wife of Cure for Gravity, she has an open spot to be a sidekick on the show. She said, your podcast needs a sidekick. So there. If you want to be a sidekick, (laughs) hey, there is an opening. Give Jesma some competition. I'm sure she's up for the challenge. If you would like to compete with Jesma in being a sidekick on this show, email me, Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. Oh, by the way, Mirio got no emails, so he's not going to be on the podcast. Mike, that is so sad. Well, we gave him a chance. Email me, Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. We read your comments on the section emails from email. Also, email me there if you'd like to be a guest on the show or if you'd like to sponsor the show, Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. And then there's the wonderful website, Mike's Daily Podcast.com, with links to where to listen to the show in iTunes. Subscribe to the show in iTunes, and you can also comment on the show and rate the show. If you do that, that helps our ranking, and more people will find out about us, and that will be great because right now no one knows about us. We're like this best-kept secret on the internet. Another great way to get the word out is to like the Facebook page, facebook.com slash Mike's Daily Podcast. And when I post a new show, share it with your friends and more people will find out about us. I post a picture that includes the link to where to listen to the show. And then um, if you just share that with your friends, more people will find out about us and it's awesome. Another great way to support the show there at mikesdailypodcast.com is through the Amazon link. All your Christmas shopping this year that you're going to do on Amazon, go through Mike's Daily Podcast first and click on the Amazon link to buy what it is that you're going to buy, and that helps us out. There's also links to where to find us on Instagram, YouTube, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Spreaker, MixCloud, Podomatic, Yelp, Tumblr, and Twitter. All my past interviews are there at mikesdailypodcast.com, as well as the daily podcast picture and the blog. Ooh, I've even got some past interviews I've done back in the 90s. When I used to have a country radio show where I interviewed some up-and-coming country artists like Keith Urban and Blake Shelton, who have gone on to be judges on shows that I never watch. 
and you can hear those interviews and also hear some songs that I have done. I guess they kind of qualify for songs, but you can check that out as well at mikesdailypodcast.com. Into an interview. NTNT, it's Dustin Brown, who is the founder, creator, the force behind NTNT, and he is speaking to me while traveling cross-country, and and he's uh, interesting to talk to. And he, Hello. And he's got an album called And Then the Moon, and you can find out more at ntntmusic.com. It's been so cool talking to you. I, I wanted to say that your music, to me, sounds new, but also a little retro, and it kind of reminds me, with your vocal style and everything, like uh, 80s bands like Heaven 17 and Icicle Works. It kind of reminds me a little bit of them, sort of... Um, they did that song, a whisper to a scream, kind of that. Uh, yeah. It had that That's really awesome. co- really cool beat and everything, and uh, yeah, but different. That's actually my dad. Um, that was his band, so just kidding. Weird. Wow. Weird. Just the- like you, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up to be like you. And the yeah. cats in the cradle in the... Uh, <laughs> still, still, still. Yeah, that song too. And I was going to play this song called "The Fury" that you do, and it's interesting because there was a '70s movie called "The Fury" with like these kids that had superpowers or something. And isn't there a movie called "Fury Out"? I want to, I want to, I want to watch the '70s one. Oh, Fury! No, I'm sorry, I'm thinking of the Brad Pitt movie that was so big. Oh, what? that came out uh, just uh, last month or the month before. Yeah. I need to watch more movies. I'm so out of it. Right I now. never watch any movies either. <laughs> but what? Um, or sports. What inspired or sports? We neither of us were into other things. But the fu- yeah. What inspired this song, "The Fury"? Um, I had a friend that um, kind of grew up with, and he was making some choices that were harming him. I guess, and then I found out. Um, that he was act, he's actually terminally ill so um, that's what the song's about like it, it's kind of like an encouragement to like not give up but to, uh, to you know like just because like it's hitting the fan and it's close to like the end or whatever it doesn't mean that you should be doing this with your life <laughs> you mm, know mm-hmm. like so it's kind of like a call out to a friend, a dear friend, that like I was like you're rooting for him, you know, like but yeah, that that uh, you're almost um, giving him some what, like a cheerleader. Yeah, it's like a cheerleader song for a friend. I see. Wow. And did did yeah. he did he ever respond to hearing the song? I asked him if he would mind if I called it the Fury. Because it was kind of like um, a, a funny little inside joke that we had, and I didn't know. So I, I never really was like, dude, this song's about you. Listen to it. I just kind of, I wrote it to express my feelings more than to like give to him. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's, it's kind of like a weird time when you don't know what to do. Because it's like, well, bro, I'm not going through what you're going through. But I know about it, and I can't really blame you for what you're doing. But this is this is how I feel. So I had to like I had to write a song, and I I don't know if he like directly knows that it's about him or not. I never really presented it to him like that. Well, it's a great song. I'm gonna play it right now, and they're playing in Arizona on the ninth. Uh, That's right. Sky Bar in Tucson on the tenth. The gold spike in vegas on the 11th and then they're going to be oh neck of the woods in san francisco on the 13th so yeah and find out all their dates there ntntmusic.com and they're on facebook and say say again you're on you're on facebook too at facebook.com slash ntnt music that's right and you're on twitter and soundcloud and youtube and instagram and Snapchat, you can Snapchat us if you want. Wow, has that been going on? Has that had some interesting results? Oh, Snapchat's amazing. Yeah, it's 
really great went for long Snow Ride. That's your favorite. You know, people. Some people are like, "Oh, they're." I don't trust Snapchat because they're saving all those pictures that I'm taking, and you know. <laughs> 